welcome to OLK TV News. I am Mariam Amina Abubakar and thanks for being with us. Now, the news headlines. Update on candidates who could not write 2023 UTME examination. U.S. President Biden announces re-election bid. Edo APC Vice Chairman, seven others expelled. Manchester City versus Arsenal. Analysis, predictions. And thanks for being with us. Now the news info. The Joint Admission and Matriculation Board JAM has rescheduled candidates who missed the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination on Tuesday due to technical challenges. The examination body asked the affected JAM candidate to print a new examination notification. JAM announced this in a statement released through its spokesperson. Fabian Benjamin after its management meeting at the close of yesterday's examination. The statement says all candidates who could not sit for the UTME on Tuesday, 25th April 2023, on account of technical challenges, have been rescheduled following the announcement. Candidates who, for technical reasons, could not take the examinations are to print a new examination notification Wednesday, 26 April 2023 to know their new scheduled sessions. It is to be noted that about 100 centers out of the 708 centers participating in the 2023 UTME exercise across the country experienced technical challenges that prevented their allotted candidate for successfully taking their examination. The board reiterated its determination to deploy world-class assessment in line with global best practices to deliver quality assessment and regretted any inconveniences experienced by candidates and their parents. And now over to the United States. The United States President Joe Biden has announced that he will be running for re-election as President of the USA in 2024. He said the battle for the soul of the nation isn't yet complete in his new 2024 launch video on Tuesday morning. Biden made his re-election announcement four years after he announced his bid to run for the U.S. presidency for the first time on April 25, 2019. The U.S. president announcing the launch of his campaign for his re-election wrote on his verified Twitter page, Every generation has a moment where they have had to stand up for democracy to stand up for their fundamental freedoms, I believe this is ours. That's why I'm running for re-election as President of the United States. Join us, let's finish the job. After a series of big legislative wins and momentous foreign policy struggle in his first two years in office, Biden has no real challenger from within the, from within the Democratic Party. But in a campaign that may result in a rematch of the 2020 election against Donald Trump, he is expected to face constant and fair scrutiny over his age. The veteran Democrat will be at a cease by the end of a second term. Even if a medical examination in February found him fit to execute the duties of the presidency, many, including his own voter base, believe he is too old. An NBC News poll released over the weekend found that 70% of Americans, including 51% of Democrats, believe he should not run. 69% of all respondents who said he shouldn't run cited concerns over his age as a major or minor reason. Biden likes to answer those concerns by saying, watch me implying that voters should focus on his policy wins at home and his marshalling of unprecedented Western alliance to help Ukraine defend itself against Russia's invasion. 
And now back to the nation, the Edo State All Progressive Congress APC Vice Chairman, Chief Francis Inebenike, and seven other party members in the Eastern Central Local Government Area of Edo State have been expelled from APC. The decision was conveyed in a letter dated April 21, 2023, titled Letter of the Expulsion of Eight APC Members in the Eastern Central Local Government over Anti-Party Activities, signed by Rollins Ekoba, the Party Local Government Chairman and 24 others, and addressed to the State APC Chairman, Cornell David Imose Retired. According to the letter, the expelled members were accused of holding meetings in a hotel in Edunu Erua before the March 18, 2023 House of Assembly and House of Representatives elections, where they allegedly resolved to work against the All Progressive Congress in the election. While some of them worked for the People's Democratic Party, PDP, others worked for the Labour Party, LP, just to ensure that the APC candidate fell in the election, the later alleged. The later further stated that a meeting of the Eastern Central Local Government area of the APC executive members and some stakeholders in the local government was held on March 20, 2023 to ascertain the reason that led to the party's failure in the area in the election. The suspended persons were accused of engaging in various anti-party activities which were investigated by a five-man panel set up to look into the matter. Only one person, Mr. Theophilus Oko of Ward 1, made a representation to the committee to deny his involvement in any form of anti-party activities. We will now be going on a short break. We will be right back. Stay with us. and thanks for being with us. Appeal Court President orders the relocation of Eboe Election Petition Tribunal to Abuja High Court. The order, which is with immediate effect, was given by Chief Judge of the Court of Appeal, Monica Mensem. Secretary of the Tribunal, Nyoro Harry Sekula, confirmed this in Abakaliki on Wednesday. He said that following the directive, the Election Petition Tribunal Office at the Eboe State Judiciary Headquarters in Abakaliki has shut down. According to him, all processes relating to matters before the tribunal will continue at Abuja. He said the Honorable Justice Monica Dogban Mensem, President Court of Appeal, HPCA, has through the Deputy Chief Registrar, Election Petition Tribunal, EPT headquarters in Abuja directed the relocation of EPT sitting here to FCT. Therefore, in compliance with the HPCA directives, the petitioners, counsel to parties and the general public are hereby informed by this medium that the EPT sitting in Abakaliki he thereby ceases to operate in Abakaliki as of 26th of April 2023. Filing of processes, taking of proceedings, etc., shall henceforth continue at Abuja. He could not speak on the reason for the decision to move the tribunal to Abuja, saying it was not within his jurisdiction. Mr. Henry further noted that the River State Election Petition Tribunal, including other states, are also affected. Women employed as street sweepers in Calabar municipality and Calabar South local government areas of Cross Rivers protested over the non-payment of their stipends for about four months. The women who protested at the entrance of the governor's office in Calabar had placards with inscriptions such as, Pay us our money and we are tired of working without pay. Addressing newsmen on the matter, the leader of the protesters, Mrs. Onkoyo Efiong, 
who is 60 years old, said they have not been paid for four months, adding that it was tiring. According to F. Young, they just want to let the governor know that they have not been paid for four months now. They alleged that in 2015, they refused to pay them for six months, and now they want to go away with their four months' salaries. Some of them are paid 5,000 naira monthly, while others receive 10,000 naira, and those called rakers are paid 15,000 naira a month. She said they just want to be given their money before the incumbents leave office. On her part, Mrs. Emana Cobham, another elderly woman, noted that they took so much risk in the cost of sweeping the street. Also, Cobham said as early as 4.30 a.m. in the morning, they were expected to be at duty post to sweep their portion, always a long stretch before daybreak. This is not the first time street sweepers are protesting in the Calabar metropolis over the non-payment of their stipends. In 2022, the age workers, mostly in their 70s and 60s, took to the street twice over similar treatment. Responding to their plight, the Commissioner for Information, Mr. Eric Anderson, said he's aware of their situation, but that is not his beat, but that of the Commissioner for the Environment, Mr. Umfam Basi, who didn't pick up calls or respond to text messages placed on his phone by a non-correspondent monitored by our reporter over the pathetic situation. Now over to understate. The understate House of Assembly Speaker, Bamidele Olo Yelogun, on Tuesday arraigned before the State High Court in Akure by the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, EFCC, over a late misappropriation of public funds. Alongside Oye Logun in the alleged fraud were the lawmaker representing Akoko South West Constituency 2, Felumi Bankole, and the civil servant Shengun Oyadei. Bankole also appeared before the court. The offenders were docked on a two count charge in the offenders were docked on a two count charge involving fraud and mismanagement of public resources. Even though they had pleaded not guilty, the counsel to the EFCC Kingsley Kudos asked the court to remand the defendant to the Olokuta Correctional Facility. While counsel to the defendant, Femi Emodemore, who told the court that he was fully prepared for the commencement and continuation of the trial, asked the court to strike out EFCC's prayer for remand. Adding that the administrative bail application on the defendant was still active. A modern Murray added further that the second defendant, Ole Logan, was having a health challenge that needed urgent medical attention. He also asked the court to caution the nominal complaint, who is the former deputy speaker, Iroju Ogundeji, in the case to stop mourning his client by sending messages to him. Justice Adeboyega Adebusayo, however, granted the defendant an administrative bail but asked them to appear before the court during the next hearing. The matter was adjourned till May 18, 2023 for further hearing. Constitutional lawyer Chief Ambrose Albert Oworo has filed a fresh suit seeking to stop the inauguration of Bola Ahmed Tinibu as Nigeria's new president on May 29, 2023. The suit marked CA CV 259-2023 was instituted at the Court of Appeal. Oworu, once President Muhammad Buhari, Attorney General of the Federation AGF, and the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC, to be prohibited from inaugurating the 2023 president-elect on May 29, 2023. The motion on notice filed on his behalf by Mr. Odion Peter has been served on President Muhammad Buhari and AGF through their counsel. Mrs. Maimuna Laimi Ashuru of the Federal Ministry of Justice in Abuja, while that of INEC, was served through the head of legal department and senior advocate of Nigeria, son, Mr. S.O. Ibrahim. The Court of Appeal is yet to fix a date for the hearing of the suit. We will now be going on a short break. We will be right back. Stay with us.
back and thanks for being with us. A veteran Nigerian journalist, Peter Enahoro, also known as Peter Pan, has passed away at the age of 88. Mr. Enahoro was also an author, businessman and columnist for the New African magazine. He died in London on Monday. According to multiple sources familiar with his passing, born to a family of 10 children, Mr. Enahoro started his media career as an assistant publicity officer at what is now called the Federal Ministry of Information in 1954. He later joined Daily Trust as a sub-editor in 1955 at the age of 20 before moving on to serve as assistant district manager at with the Fission Services Ibadan in 1957. He became the editor of the Nigerian Sunday Times in 1958 at the age of 23 and futures editor of the Daily Times in 1958, then the paper's editor in 1962, going on to become the Daily Times Group editorial advisor in 1965 and in 1966 he became editor-in-chief of the Daily Times. In the 1960s, Mr. Enohoro went into a self-imposed exile that will last for 13 years. He was contributing editor of Radio Dutch Welle in Cologne, Germany from 1966 to 1976 and was the Africa editor of National Zeitung in Basel, Switzerland, becoming editorial director of New African Magazine in London in 1978. And now over to Sudan. The federal government has commenced the process of evacuating Nigerian students stranded in Sudan. At least 420 people have been killed and over 3,700 injured following the deadly fight raging between forces loyal to two rival military generals in the country. The Nigerian government has released the sum of 150 million naira to hire at least 40 buses that will convey the stranded Nigerian students from war town Sudan through Cairo and Egypt. It was gathered that some of the buses arrived this morning as students prepare for evacuation back to Nigeria. And now over to Sport News. Arsenal is said to face Manchester City in a highly anticipated Premier League match that will determine the winner of the 2023 title. However, Arsenal's poor track record against Manchester City over the past few years could hinder their chances of winning the league for the first time since 2003 to 2004. The Gunners have lost their last 11 Premier League games against Man City, which is their longest losing streak against a single opponent in the league. In their six Premier League visits to the Etihad Stadium through Pep Guardiola's tenure as Man City's manager, Arsenal has lost all of them, with the aggregate score being 17-3. Additionally, Arsenal hasn't won at Man City since January 2015. Arsenal manager Mikel Ateta, who was previously Pep Guardiola's assistant at Man City, has lost all six of his Premier League games against Man City. Arsenal needs to win this game as Man City is only five points behind them. With two games in hand, however, Arsenal has struggled to score in recent years at the Etihad Stadium, netting just three goals in their last 10 Premier League games against Man City and failing to score in seven of them. Arsenal will be missing William Saliba, Mohamed Eleni and Takiro Tomiyasu due to injuries. Granit Jaka is also a doubt for the match after missing the previous game due to illness. Gabriel Jesus and Alexandra Zinchenko, who both won the Premier League title with Man City in the previous two seasons, are both fit to face their former club. Nathan Ake is the only absentee from Man City's team due to a hamstring injury he picked up against Bayern Munich. Back in February, Manchester City secured a 3-1 win against Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium in a rearranged Premier League fixture. And this will be all the news on OLAK TV today, but before we go, here is a recap of the major headlines. Update on candidate who could not write 2023 UTME examination. U.S. President Biden announces re-election bid. Edo APC Vice Chairman, seven others expelled. Man City versus Arsenal, analysis 
and predictions. You can follow us on our social media handles displayed on your TV screen for all your advert, sponsorship and inquiries. I remain Mariam Amino Abubakar. Till I come your way again with another interesting news. Until then, stay safe and happy.